So in the gospel today, Jesus reads the Samaritan woman's soul. So one of the gifts uh, of, of the Holy Spirit, and some of the mystics have this, this, is that they can read somebody's soul, meaning that that person can come before them, they can look at them, and actually see right into their soul. Now the interesting thing is when this woman goes to Jesus and he reads her soul and he tells her, you're right, you don't have one husband, you've had five and one of them's not your wife, she doesn't walk away upset or hurt. She walks away excited and happy because of the encounter. I've had this happen to me before. My spiritual director for my annual retreat for the last 10 years, his name is Monsignor Esif. So Monsignor Esif is in his late 90s. He's like 96 years old. He's about this tall. Uh, he's got a beard. He looks like a little Yoda. And Monsignor Esif has the gift of reading souls. He's also the exorcist for the Diocese of Scranton. His spiritual director was Padre Pio. The first time he met him was through bilocation. So Padre Pio directed Monsignor Esif. Monsignor Esif directed Mother Teresa. Monsignor Esif also directed me. And so that means that you are all great-grandchildren of Padre Pio right now. So I heard about this Monsignor from some other priests and seminarians that had gone to him and that he has this gift of reading souls. And the first time that I met with him, I was actually pretty terrified. I'm not a perfect person. I have my own sin. And so I walked into his office, and he, there was a chair, just one chair there, and he pointed at the chair, and he goes, I just got done doing an exorcism. Why don't you go ahead and sit down there? And I thought, I don't want to sit in that chair. And when I sat down, he bent over, and he stared at me for about two minutes and didn't say anything. And then when he spoke, he said this to me. He said, you could have never been married. And I looked at him and I said, what, why? What's wrong with me? And he goes, you could have never been married because your love for God is so strong that no one woman would have ever satisfied you. And he said, your gift is piety. That's your gift. Now, when I heard that, I kind of thought, can I have another gift? Because piety sounds pretty boring. I don't know, at least when I was growing up, piety sounded like, you know, you were reverent, you did the right thing. Um, but piety really is this deep love for God the Father. And it's a love that's so strong that nothing in the world will satisfy it. Monsignor really taught me how to pray. And by that, I mean how to really encounter the Trinity, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit as real personal relationships with each one of them. What happened to me is when I walked away from Monsignor again, I was not filled with sadness when he read my soul. I was filled with great joy and excitement. See, growing up, the reason I didn't really want the gift of piety is growing up, I thought prayer was boring. I didn't know how to pray. I said prayers, but I thought it was boring. I thought the Mass was boring. I thought priests were boring. And uh, even when I was thinking about priests, I didn't want to be a priest because I didn't want to have a boring life. Well, you'll discover in the next three nights at the mission that I probably am anything but boring. Prayer is never boring. If, we're, if prayer is boring for us, we're not doing it right. It, it means that we're not encountering God, the mystery of God. And if Mass is boring, we're probably also not encountering Mass right because this entire mystery of God revealing himself to us happens when he comes in his body and his blood. So I want you to think about that. If you had the opportunity to have your soul read and somebody could tell you everything about you, would you do it? Think about that. When I lead these different types of prayer, so there's six different types of prayer that I lead, and they're all based on the mystics. So St. Ignatius, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Benedict, all these prayers are found in our church tradition. But when I, I remember going into the seminary, I didn't really know how to pray. Again, I knew how to say prayers, but I didn't really know how to pray. So I bought a, a book uh, of prayers that I went into seminary with, and it turns out that wasn't really praying either. It was saying prayers. Now, there is saying prayers where we talk to God, and that's vocal prayer. 
And that's something that we all are called to do, to talk to God. But in the, in the Catholic tradition, there's three levels of prayer, vocal prayer, meditative prayer, and contemplative prayer. So vocal prayer is that talking to God. Meditative prayer is when we use our imagination and our minds and we can see Jesus and hear his voice and talk to God and, and, uh, and dialogue with him. And then contemplative prayer is actually experiencing heaven right here on earth. And so these next three nights, I'm going to lead you through those types of prayer, moving us from vocal prayer to meditative prayer to contemplative prayer. And just to give you a quick glimpse of this, we're not going to do it for long, but I'm going to lead you through a little guided meditation on this scripture. So I want you to close your eyes. If you feel safe enough to do that, close your eyes. And allow yourself, if nothing else, just to rest for a moment this Sunday. If you fall asleep, try not to snore. And just use your imagination. So I want you to enter into this scene like it's a movie. So imagine you go to the well because you're thirsty. You have a bucket there in your hands. And it's noon. It's the middle of the day. And the, the, the area around this well is very dry and hot. And as you're sitting at the well, getting ready to get some water, Jesus walks up to you. And I want you to try to see his face. It says he's tired, so he sits down to take a rest. So Jesus looks tired and weary. And he says that to you, give me a drink. And you start to think, well, you don't have a bucket. How can I give you a drink? And then he asks you a question. And that question is right about your sin. What's that one sin that you're struggling with? that sin that you hope that during this season of Lent you can be free from? What's that sin that is so deep that it has a stronghold over you? It may bring you shame. But when Jesus looks at you, you begin to hope you begin to hope that he can and wants to free you from this sin. He knows it, by the way, and he knows you. But just as Monsignor looked at me, Jesus gazes at you for a moment. And in his eyes, you see his love for you. And you know that he's going to free you. And he tells you everything that you have done. And now you are filled with hope instead of despair. And so look at Jesus once more in the eyes and just smile back at him. And if you're not asleep, you can open your eyes back up. So that is a prayer called Ignatian Meditation. So St. Ignatius teaches us to go through a scripture passage and enter into it like a movie, like we're there. And we discover that as we enter it into it, Jesus become, be, begins to be personal to us and real to us. And that would be the meditative prayer. So again, these next three nights, I'll teach you how to enter more deeply into meditative and contemplative prayer. I promise you that if you're struggling to hear God's voice in your life or struggling to know what he wants from you, you will walk away from this mission hearing his voice, having direction, 
and if nothing else, walking away with great joy that you have encountered Christ. And as we come forward to receive him today at the Eucharist, just have that desire. Have that desire that he open you up, that he gives us this gift of piety, and that he gives us the life-giving water that we all desire.